Good evening. The first main section of the new Aberdeen bypass has opened to drivers. The AWPR was the biggest roads project in the UK when construction started in 2015, but has been hit by weather delays and the financial collapse of one of its main contractors. Ross Govins reports. Around three and a half years after construction started, traffic was finally flowing on the first section of Aberdeen's bypass. Only four miles out of 28 can be driven on at the moment, but it's been hailed as a significant milestone. Today is an historic day with the opening of this new section. It's a major investment we're making into the area of some £745 million and it will make a massive difference to the local area and work continues to make good progress in areas that continue to have to be completed. Given the green light by Scottish ministers in 2009, the project was initially delayed by protests and legal action. The collapse of contractor Carillion and bad weather has also seen the completion date for the entire route put back. It's currently scheduled for the late autumn. I think we've shown as a local authority that we are committed to this new infrastructure project, £75 million invested. Um, the people of the North East, I think, have been patiently waiting uh, for it to, to, to be opened and hopefully today they'll see the fruits of that and uh, before too long we'll see the whole of the network. As well as significantly easing congestion, it's hoped the route will provide a £6 billion economic boost to the North East economy. Ross Govins. STV News. Businesses in Dundee have been hearing how they can benefit from nearly half a million visitors a year brought in by the V&A Museum. Firms were told how progress was being made on the billion pound waterfront redevelopment at a major economic summit today. Here's David Shanks. There are just 79 days left until the V&A at Dundee opens its doors to the public here. And with an estimated three to 500,000 people expected to visit the city every year after that, local businesses have gathered today to hear how they could benefit. More than 200 people from community groups and the private sector have come to Dundee's Gardine Theatre today for the annual economic summit. It's the last such meeting before the opening of the V&A Museum. There's a lot of work going into making the city uh, V&A ready, as we call it, um, because it's really important that we uh, get as many visitors through that building and coming to Dundee because of the V&A as possible, because those first year worth of visitors, the numbers are so important to the hospitality industry and the tourism industry. The council say the project is on course and within budget, but six of the sites on the billion pounds waterfront development remain vacant. It's understood discussions are underway with interested companies, but with such a large scale investment in one particular area, the council's leader says he hopes the impact can be felt throughout the city. It's not something that happens overnight and I often describe it as a jigsaw puzzle. The v is only one component of that jigsaw puzzle and we need all the other bits to fit together in order to realise all of that ambition and potential for people in this city. So we often talk about the waterfront development. That is absolutely a key driver for the local economy moving forward. But we have some significant projects underway and being delivered as it is at the moment. So there's investment going into housing, community centres, uh, into new schools. The v here will open on the 15th of September welcoming in Dundonians and hundreds of thousands of tourists alike. David Shanks, STV News. And finally, temperatures in Scotland hit a record-breaking 31 degrees today, making it the hottest day in five years. Warm air from the Sahara brought the sweltering conditions with Avi Moore the warmest place in the country. Colin White was there sunning himself in the Highlands. <laughs> The sunbathers were out in force at Loch Morlick. They were certainly enjoying the heat. It's great. There's a real buzz about the place. Everybody's happy. There's lots of sunshine and space for people who want it. Here comes heat. It's summer, so it's time to shake off the shoes, shove on the shorts, wear a shocking shirt, and shove on the shades. Oh, it's beautiful. It's too hot, though. Oh, it's absolutely fantastic, isn't it? How are you enjoying the sun? It's beautiful. Can't believe we're in Avi Moore. We're just going to sit back and enjoy the sun. We've had a picnic, we've got drinks we're with our granddaughter, and we're just having a fab time. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. This is what makes Scotland. 
Aviemore was the hottest spot in Scotland today with a record-breaking 31 degrees. It was certainly sizzling. Well, this must be one of Aviemore's busiest shops today, the ice cream parlour. They've got all sorts of flavours here to tempt you, if you need it tempted on a day like this. David, this hot weather must be fantastic for business. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. We're really, really busy this morning as well, this afternoon. And it's brilliant seeing people coming out, you know, enjoying the sunshine. So, yeah, here's a Coney. Oh, Help you cool down. Thanks very much. Of course, not everywhere in the country was enjoying the high temperatures experienced in the Highlands. Parts of the east coast near Aberdeen were shrouded in North Sea Har, where temperatures struggled to reach even 12 degrees. But it was far from frozen at Loch Morlich today. And the good news is it looks like being another scorcher in many parts tomorrow. Well, let's hope the sunshine stays. That's all from the north. Back now to Scotland tonight. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.